So I just wanted to ask you specifically about the Dangerous Wild Animals Act, because when I first came across this, I thought it seemed to be the story that everyone was going to. Dangerous Wild Animals Act, you needed a license. Um, black leopards were maybe kept among sort of criminal kingpins and then released when they needed a license. Um, and then I was speaking to someone the other day and they, were, they just said, well, if you had a black leopard, wouldn't you sell it to a zoo? Because, mm. you know, you might be able to get, you know, the same price as mm. a small car for it. At the time, well, no, because there'd be a, a glut in the market, wouldn't there? Everybody, there'd be too many. And also, zoos don't tend to pay for animals. Um, we oh, really? give them to each other. Uh, it's very unusual to buy them from collect collectors. Okay. And maybe the standards would be different in those days, perhaps. But uh, generally, zoos exchange animals via the stud book. And if someone came to you and they you want a you'd be like, where's it from? and who, who are the parents? Because ultimately, zoos are conservation exercises and you want to be able to say that your population throughout all of the European zoos is viable so that if the, uh, there's ever a chance of re-releasing them into the wild, you're not releasing genetically defective animals because one bad uh, um, leopard could spawn, you know, 100, 500, um, yeah. uh, several generations down the line or with hip dysplasia, it's like, da, you know. So you, the, you would, probably wouldn't get the money and also most zoos would be reluctant. Okay, and that, that sort of conservation effort would have, would have still been there in the, in the 70s? Probably, yeah, yeah. probably. Not definitely, because I know things were, were a bit looser then. But yeah. also, if you've got, you know, they're expensive to keep and you've probably already got a leopard. And, you know, if someone gave, wants you to have a leopard, it's a big deal. It's like, you know, build an enclosure yourself. This is why the DWA caused this, this uh, release, is because of the expense of housing them properly. And zoos haven't just got open-ended budgets or open-ended spaces. And you, you know, I'm sure lots of them did go to zoos, lots of those sorts of things, but there'll be a limit. So do you think that the Dangerous Wild Animals Act is um, a credible theory as to some sightings, or do you reckon with the, the amount of time it's been that they'll either be found, captured, videoed, or dead. From now, the current sightings based on the DWA, I'd say that I would be amazed, personally, if there are any, from 1976. That would be, uh, the, the, the lifespan is about 10 years, isn't it? So it'd be like four oh, yeah, or five yeah, yeah. generations. Like breeding and... Yeah, five generations yeah, in yeah. the wild, I, I, I doubt that, personally. Yeah. I would, yeah. I'd be very surprised. Just a very quick, question um, from my other half who probably makes a much better journalist than I do. Uh, what's your favourite big cat and why? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, well, we can meet him. Is Chincha the Jaguar. He is awesome. Uh, jaguars are mesmerising animals. Um, they're cleverer than the others. They're solitary ambush predators. They're beautiful and they move like ninjas. They don't do any... There's never a time... Like a tiger might just flop around or... Oh, hello. And a lion is a bit lazy and dopey and needs its friends to make a kill. Um, and the cheetahs are idiots. But he's not. He's just awesome. And uh, uh, we got ours from France. He was very stressed when he arrived because he was a he was two and he'd been sort of pushed out by his parents and we had to take him. And he was he wouldn't engage with us even though we were reassuring him yeah. until I started speaking to him in French. And then he immediately looked at me, like, ah, tu pas français. And he came <laughs> over and he lay down like that and looked at me. And really? Like and he is just jaw-droppingly beautiful and mesmerizing. And he's the one who has the biggest effect on the serviceman, actually, because yeah. he's just scintillating. Wonderful. It's been great chatting. Could you just tell us what's, you know, what's, what's new about the zoo, anyone who's visited before, what's great to come back and see, and if you haven't been before, what's, what's here on offer? Wow, well, we've got a... Um, 200 or so animals here. We've got um, a lovely group of zebras now, which maybe they're relatively new. So people who haven't been for a couple of years might not have seen a gorgeous zebra. We're building up the monkeys. We've got some fabulous um, red-handed tamarinds. And when you look at them, you can see why they're called that. Um, baby marmosets. Uh, and the most exciting thing on the horizon is the ammo leopards that we're getting very soon oh, cool. for reintroduction. And this is like, wow. this is what zoos should be doing is using some of the facilities to breed specifically for reintroduction. And I think there are between 30 and 60 in the wild yeah. and 300 in zoos. 
and we're getting four. Uh, two off show that will breed for, uh, for reintroduction and two on show. And um, it's, uh, yeah, exciting times. You know, if you'd escaped in December, mm. it might have been a different story. Well, it yeah. almost certainly would have been. Apparently, he'd caught a rabbit in uh, Portland, where he came from, that, that rabbits can come through here, this sort of mesh. And uh, either he or his mother had pounced. I mean, if you think, you know, nobody teaches a domestic cat to kill things, but they yeah. come back with mice all the time. Could they live on them yeah. is a different story. And that's the difficult thing for me with all of these big cats is it's fine. They can kill the odd thing. Can they do it every day without getting injured and without getting seen yeah. is, is, an, is another ask mm. altogether. I, I would say that is Willow, the female, who is more sociable. Flavie, the, the one who escaped, tends to walk off when people see him. Is this Eurasian lynx then, is it? Carpathian. Carpathian. Hello girl. This guy yeah. came from France, speaks French, and he will kill you the same, but he, he'll come out and, you know, roll around first. So someone found some evidence and, and you know, the odd one was still out there. I know yeah. that's not what you yeah. believe. Do you think this kind of species, hypothetically speaking, should be, um, there should be conservation in place and protection in place, or do you think? Well, this was a really weird thing. When we heard about the puma yeah. being on Dartmoor and that came to visit here, yeah. I got permission from the local council to build an enclosure on this spot with a trap tunnel in the middle. So you put the pumas in it, the females have a huge internal, uh, like a humane trap, yeah. which once the male came in the middle, the door would shut behind. And the council weren't very happy with this idea because uh, it's all a bit, you know, harebrained. Yeah. And they got permission through, they asked, I, I got permission, lots of people um, were, were asked about the viability of it and they said, it'll never work, so they might as well let him do it. Yeah. And as soon as I started talking about it, people said, you shouldn't trap a wild animal, it's immoral. Mm. And it's against, um, you know, zoo practice yeah. of catching things in the wild. And, and I'm thinking, well, if it had, if we'd let it out, you'd want us to get it back, yeah. because and it's not indigenous. Um, so it is an interesting, and I was surprised, and, and I, I, don't know, I had to think about this ethical idea of uh, catching it. And I thought, well, I think it's a, I think it would be ethical to catch something non-indigenous that was out there, yeah. partly for its own good, because it, is it really, is, is it a one-off or is it part of a viable population, yeah. and also for the gen genetic diversity. That's a tough one. If he's out there, he or she's out there foraging themselves, you know, and are descended from, you know, some from the 70s, yeah. they'll be cool. That would be good genes to be part of a, a proper breeding program. Yeah. It does raise issues. But um, if there are cats out there, like uh, um, if, we, if you reintroduce the lynx, say, in yeah. these small areas where there are no uh, no farmers and people. Yeah. It, it will be really useful to do the whole trophic cascade thing for the local deer so you don't, won't have to go and sure. um, cull them and yeah. the, you know the wildlife will behave differently and all this sort of thing. Yeah. But if you're camping in those areas and your two-year-old wanders off and twists its ankle and you've lost the two-year-old, yeah. it's just that extra dimension of risk that yeah. we're not really used to in this country. Yeah.